Hey, what's up, River people? Thank you for tuning in to today's video. If you are a river geek like me, this is going to be a video for you because we are going to be talking about how we can track data to become better river fishermen over the course of the year through using the data provided by the U.S. Geological Survey, or USGS, and their river gauges throughout the entire country. So we're going to start with an overview of that, and we're going to talk about how to get to know your river based on that data. And then we're going to talk about a spreadsheet that I made and we're going to tie in some fishing data and river data so that we can really learn how to become better anglers over the course of the year based on the certain conditions that the river provides us. All right, we are going to start today's video by going over a little river gauges how to. And I do have to say, if you are a river fisherman and you have not been using the USGS website prior to this point, you really need to examine yourself. Well, it's maybe not that serious, but you definitely need to be using this site in order to better understand the rivers that you fish consistently. Okay, so in order to get started, we are going to need to access the USGS Water Data website, and we can go to waterdata.usgs.gov slash nwis to access this, or we can simply search the name of our river and type in keywords uh, such as river level or USGS afterwards in Google, and that's going to give us some gauges that are on that river most likely. Now on the USGS website, there is a map where you can look at all their monitoring locations throughout the country. So that's probably the best way to do it if you're looking for something specific that is close to the area that you fish, uh, that's your best bet. Obviously, not all rivers and streams can be monitored by the USGS, but there are a ton. And if you are looking for a river or stream that is not monitored by the USGS, but there is a similar river in the same watershed, you can look at data from that river in order to get a rough reference point so you can get an idea of basic things like the water level at certain times throughout the year. Okay, once you've settled on the gauge that you're interested in looking at, for example, I'm looking at the Susquehanna River at Harrisburg, we are greeted with a page that shows the past seven days worth of data, and I think by default it shows us the river gauge height, but if you scroll down, you can change the data that's displayed, and this data will vary depending on the monitoring location that you're looking at. Sometimes it only has gauge height and discharge. Sometimes it has some other parameters such as temperature. The top three things that I use if they're available are gauge height, discharge, and temperature to me those are the most important so that's primarily what I deal with but there's something else that you can do on this first page here you can go to change time span and you can actually type in a specific date range that you're interested in looking at I do this a lot when I know I had a really good day let's say the first week of April I can go and look at all of the data last year for that specific week and if you're lucky enough some of these monitoring locations even have a camera that takes pictures at least once a day for that specific location and you can go back and actually look at the river over certain periods of time so that is a really cool feature of this website now that we've talked briefly about the basic features of the website, I want to talk a little bit about how I think you should be using it. First and foremost, I would like for you to just look at data for your river and get an idea of seasonal norms. You know, what is the normal gauge height for the month of April? How does that compare to the last three Aprils? Uh, when does the temperature hit 50 degrees on average? Those are the things you can use to really get a good idea of how your river behaves at certain times of the year. For example, if I'm curious about whether or not I should get out on River X in the middle of March, I can look back at the past year's data to get an understanding of what the river height usually is, or maybe what the discharge usually is for the month of March. So if I see that what it is today is double of what it is over the past three years around this time, then maybe I want to wait until the river comes down a little bit in order to get out and go fishing. Similarly, if I know that during, let's say the third week of April, the temperature really kicked up and turned the fish on, I can go back and look at how the water temperature temperature changed over a set period of time so that I can maybe identify some sort of pattern when it comes to temperature and the bite. Once we have a broad idea of how the river behaves over time, we need to get out on the river and make some actual observations and tie it to the data that we can get from the USGS website. So let's say, for example, I go out and the river is three and a half feet on the gauge height. I need to make a note of what things look like at that specific water level. I'd want to pay attention to, you know, certain laydowns that are in the water or out of the water at this certain river level. Is that one eddy we like to fish even deep enough at this level? Are there areas where we're going to scrape in our kayak or maybe even have to get out and drag? 
Are the deepest holes deep enough at this river level at this time of year in order to hold fish? Where's the heaviest current at? These are going to be the things we want to pay attention to at specific water levels so that we know what the river looks like when it does return to those specific conditions. Once you get into the habit of making these observations, you do want to take some written notes or even mental notes so that you can make connections to the data provided by USGS. And of course, one thing to keep in mind is that every river is different. While discharge may be up on this river, that doesn't necessarily mean that the level comes up as high. On some rivers, the discharge and the level may come up together at about the same rate, but each river is going to be different, so you have to get out there and make your in-person observations so that all of this data makes the most sense. And because I'm a river fisherman, I want to use this river data in order to catch more fish. And I think the best way for us to do that is if we are also tracking fishing data. So full disclosure, I have not always done this. And part of my motivation for making this video is to also motivate myself to do this over the course of the year and track my own data. Now, to be fair, I did used to do this in a rudimentary way. I took pictures on fishing trips, whether that was for tournaments, on a bump board, or selfies of good fish. I would go back, I would find those photos in my album, I would look at the date, then I would hop over to the USGS website, pop in a date range, and look at what the river was doing within that certain range. So I used that data in order to try to plan similar successful trips on that same body of water in the future. But the problem with this approach is that it leaves out important fishing data points that we could use to make better decisions in the future. For example, I might have forgotten what lure I was throwing a year ago. I may not remember what part of the water column the fish were most active in. I might forget lots of important details that I could actually track in order to make better decisions in the future had I simply tracked them. So really, the goal for this video is to get myself and you to connect river data with fishing data in order to become better fishermen. So we're going to create a system in order to do this. I have found that for me, spreadsheets work. I'm a spreadsheet geek, so that's how I'm gonna track my data. If you wanna do it another way, go for it, but there are some parameters that I'm going to suggest you include so we can really get the most out of our records. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the spreadsheet itself that I made for you guys to use. You can find a link to this in the description for this video. So go ahead, click that link, open it up, go to file, hit make a copy, and then save this on your own Google account. If you don't have a Google account, I'm not sure what your options are. Um, you may want to get one if you want to use this, but in any case, the sheet is pretty self-explanatory. I have basic things like date, the name of the river. I do have the gauge location, and what I recommend is that you use a link on this so that you can go directly to the page for that specific gauge whenever you want, easily in the future. Apart from that, you're just plugging in data for whatever day you went fishing. There are a couple things I do want to explain, though. The first would be the relative water level. This is just an indication of if the water was at a normal level, a high level, or a low level. This is going to be relative. This is kind of an anecdotal observation to make the gauge height and discharge make a little more sense to you. Next, I've added a water column section, and this is for you to just select the part of the water column the fish were most active in. Next, you'll see a selection of the dominant lure type. This is where you just make a quick and simple note of whether you are throwing a moving bait, finesse bait, top water. All of these are editable, by the way. If you click the little edit button down in the bottom right-hand corner, you can add as many options as you want and customize your spreadsheet so that it works for you. And lastly, I have a trip quality column where you can just select if the trip was good, fair, or bad. And I think this is going to come in handy when we want to identify all of our good days over the course of the year so that we can go back and really dissect the data and look at what was happening. So with that said, I do want to communicate my master plan for this spreadsheet, which is after a year's worth of accumulating data, I'll be able to use it in order to really understand what the best conditions are for the best fishing. And I can do this by using the sort function on the spreadsheet or by writing formulas. But the sort function is probably going to be the easiest place to start. So if you go over to your column that has the river name in it, you can actually sort this by A to Z. And this will group all the data you've collected for that specific river together so that it's easier to digest. From there, you can look at all the days that you've designated good or bad in order to better understand what was going on on that specific trip. So after doing this, what I would do is look at all of the river data for all my most successful trips, and I would try to identify a pattern. So for example, I might look at the gauge height and see that all the days I did the best on, the river gauge was between two and a half and three feet. So now in the future, I know that at that level, I do have better chances of the fish being more active. If we add in other parameters, 
parameters, such as the discharge and the temperature, then we can even be more specific in our patterns and say, okay, I know that in April, if the river level is at X and the temperature is at Y and these things coincide, then I have the best chance of having a really good day of fishing during those specific conditions. These are the patterns and the takeaways that we want to get out of tracking our data so that we can be better fishermen in the future. Now, this data isn't going to tell us for sure that we're always gonna have a good day at this level or that temperature, whatever it may be, but it's definitely going to help us make more informed decisions based on our past fishing history. All right, everyone, that is going to be it for this video. I really hope you found it useful and you download the spreadsheet and continue to use it over this coming season. If you did find this useful in some way, go ahead and click that like button. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and do so. If you don't, no big deal, though, because you guys know the drill. I am going fishing anyway. See you out there next time.